I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about you should watch this. Yes, you really should, you know. Okay, and so... you probably should have done it before. Yeah, why are you just watching this now? You... Really, this video is about looking closer at the word should. And it's an important thing that we all should do. Oh yes, we should, right away. <laughs> See, there's a reason for it, and that is our language truly impacts our relationships. And oftentimes we communicate things that we don't mean to, right. and we do it in a way that might be frustrating, annoying to another person. And I learned this years ago, um, I don't remember if it was in grad school or not, about the word should. So Margaret's going to talk about this and why... It would be helpful if you looked at how it impacts your relationships. Right. Um, I've been trying to get rid of the word should for years and I found an article that kind of agrees with me. And what I have said to my clients is if you remove the word should from your vocabulary, which is hard to do because we're all used to saying it, um, it would be very interesting to see what we would put instead of should. And the reason I'm so unhappy with should is there's always some guilt involved with it. Mm -hmm. I should, I should have. And people will often respond with, oh, shoulda, woulda, coulda. No, I didn't say woulda, coulda. I said shoulda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want you to look at shoulda. Mm -hmm. And some comedic therapist has been saying, stop it, you've been shoulding all over yourself. <laughs> okay. So you should pay great attention to this. And so should I. Um, Consider the following examples. I should start meditating. This driver in front of me should go faster. People should be more careful. I should have been promoted. I should feel better by now. That's a favorite one I have. I've been in therapy for two years and I should feel better by now. Yes, and the problem is you, it's certainly not me. Mm -hmm. um, as these examples illustrate, we usually mean that by some objective standard, someone needs to behave better. Yes. Should is used typically when criticizing someone's actions. Yes. Or lack of action. Mm -hmm. All this... I want you to do it my way. That's right. Or the highway. All this shoulding becomes a heavy weight as we continually judge reality against an imagined standard. Because there is no standard out there that says what we all should do. Mm -hmm. When we should against ourselves, we imply that we're doing something wrong and end up feeling disappointed with ourselves for not measuring up in some way. That's right. Doing this habitually contributes to depression. And let's remember that there are parents who should upon their children, not trying to be destructive, but just saying, you should clean your room up. You should have done that faster. I always heard you should have done that faster. I've never done anything fast in my life. So I still should do things faster. Okay. <laughs> but people will always tell you things in a way, and it's frustrating. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're a partner and you make a recommendation to your partner and then they do it differently and then it doesn't work out for them, what do you do? You throw it in their face. Yep. You see, I told you, you should have done it. You should have done it just you like I said. You should have done what I said, yeah. yep. Um, and that's really out there because you should have uh, in the past, in the future, I don't, you don't even know where the should is. I've always thought there's an element of your, it makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. Even though, yeah, yes right? it does. It oh, really does yeah. make you feel like, ugh, right? When we use should against others, we tell ourselves they're failing to live up to a reasonable expectation. Yes. As a result, they feel angry and resentful. Whether we should against ourselves, 
against our circumstances. We feel frustrated and might think we're getting a raw deal. The truth is, these sorts of should statements really rarely make sense. What's the objective standard by which we're evaluating ourselves and others? Yes. Um, I often tell my partner, I think she has a handbook that has to do with his, her ethnicity, and she's never told me what the rules are, mm -hmm. you know? Um, if we look closer, we typically find that we're really stating a preference. For example, I would really like it if the baby were asleep right now. Does that mean the baby should be asleep? Of course not. That is, unless we're omniscient. Otherwise, maybe it makes perfect sense that she's awake. Perhaps we're unaware of reasonable explanations for the way things are. Maybe her sleep schedule is shifting, or her tummy hurts, or countless explanations we can't imagine. Yeah. The alternative to resisting reality is acceptance. I don't mean liking everything, but acknowledging that things aren't the way we'd like them to be, period. It's a lot less frustrating position than believing that the universe is misaligned. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, because it really does imply that we're expecting something yeah, in some way. Absolutely. Like if I say, I should be there by nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's implying that ideally you would be there at that time. That's right. But if it doesn't happen, then maybe you're frustrated, you're angry, you're upset, you're annoyed because it didn't go the way that you were expecting. It's a really important word to really evaluate in how often you say it to somebody. Because when you're continually telling somebody that they should do something, you're always implying an underlying meaning of that they're doing it wrong. Yep, that's and right. And you don't want to make anybody, especially your partner, feel like they're doing the wrong. Right. So you got to keep be aware of these words. And the other thing is when people beat themselves up, should is one of the favorite words. I should have done this. I should not have done that. And it goes on and on. And it's a great beating self or other upward. Okay. Framing our shoulds as preferences has the additional benefit of making it easier to work on them. For example, I should start meditating is at best a wish and quite possibly a criticism. Whereas I want to start meditating is much more neutral. Mm -hmm. Not, I should, I, I want to, I would like to do that. It expresses a desire we can act on. Similarly, I would like it if you were more considerate, can start a discussion, whereas you should be more considerate will probably start an argument, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, there's another big word that I just thought of while we were talking What's about this. What's that? That I thought is a really big one that we'd say and do all the time. Right. Why? Why? Why also implies you did something wrong. Yes. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Right. Exactly. Why did you do that? What's In other words, right on the face of it, that made no sense. If, if you just think about how you feel when we say it to you, why did you do that? That is a feeling of defensiveness, of uh, you feel uneasy. Yep. You feel like attacked, really. Right. Why did and you so do that? I have tried to take... Why out of my vocabulary yes, too? I have to, especially in a way yep. like if, if it's a certain you know, anytime you're asking somebody like about their behavior, why did you do? You don't want to imply that they did something wrong. Um, I would ask in a way like, well, what made you do that? What was it about that that you know you well, did this? Yeah. What was your thought process with that? Yeah. Although you got to be careful with that one. You got to be careful of the tone of voice. But yeah, what was going on? But how, did you view, how did you view that? It, watch this one. You could say to somebody, "Why did you wear that shirt? You should have wore the blue one." That's right. There's a double whammy for you. There's a double whammy. For and you. how do you feel when somebody says that? And yeah. it's only talking about a shirt, but it doesn't feel so good. Why you did it wrong, and you should have you did it wrong again. But you know, most people I have certainly discovered have more guilt in this world than they need. And should is the last thing we need, okay? We can make ourselves feel bad just fine on our own without someone saying should to us, Yeah. okay? So that's, that's that. Guilt is a big one for oh, you. Oh, yes, yeah, oh yeah, guilt is a big one, yep. That often comes from the parents. Oh yes, okay. We can talk about that one day if you'd like, yeah. yeah. How we form a conscience and parents, sure. You yeah. can do that.
Yeah, and, and, and that certainly does have a big impact on why people break up. Sure it does. You know, that they feel like they're disappointing their parents. That's right. Or not living up to the family standards. That's right. There's often an element there that you would be surprised. And another thing that this brings up is we should think about what our standards are. Mm -hmm. um, just this doesn't feel good, so it, I should be doing something else. Mm -hmm. And you just said we should do this. <laughs> well, we should. We should do this soon. It would be helpful that to would think be about what your standards are. We would like to do that. Mm -hmm. How's that? So, even though it does seem like a small thing, a small no. issue, words like should and why really don't make other people feel very good. I mean, if somebody, if you walked into work and somebody said. Uh, why did you get here late? You're going to instantly feel attacked. Yeah, and get defensive. And, whoa, yeah, uncomfortable. I had a particular client one time, I'm thinking, of whom I was very fond. And she, every single session, she would there would be something she should have done that she hadn't. And I said, well, next week, bring the book. And she said, what book? I said, the book of standards that you obviously have somewhere that I've never read. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's helpful to think about yes, these it things. Is. It really is. Because changing your dialogue really can improve can your relationship. Yeah, with your partners and friends and family as well. They yeah. will definitely appreciate you not asking why they're dating somebody that they care about. You know what I mean? Why are you, why are you with him? What are you dating him for? You should leave him for someone else. Yeah, just because he has six arms and three heads, you're judging him. <laughs> exactly. Of course, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Feel free to sign up with me. I would love to talk with you. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to talk with her. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to find us on podcast platforms, you can just search Craig Kenneth and I should come up. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. We should.